thank you. First, I want to say I have done TEDx before, but this is a real pleasure. Number one, I can speak in English. Um, and number two, that my family could be with me. So that was really fun to be able to listen to a few different generations. And I'm happy to contribute my own point of view. Uh, it's a different one <laughs> than this. It's this, I have a different one. While they find that, I, I do want to say it's really been a pleasure um, learning about Algeria. Uh, I have been here almost five years, and it's really been a pleasure to work um, and to discover Algeria. Um, because it's such a diverse place, and I think the strength of the youth is what impresses me the most. I think people are always asking me, why did you come to Algeria? And they're always asking me, Mrs., but do you like Algeria? Do you really like Algeria? And I say, yes, I do. I really do like Algeria. It's not easy. I'm not saying it's an easy place to live. But if my son, who you met earlier, if he can grow up with the same resilience that the youth have here, um, it's a pleasure with my job to be able to travel across Algeria, uh, working with universities, and to meet the youth. Uh, we try to help youth get ready for the workforce. And um, when I see, when I'm in Wergla, or when I'm in Adrar, and I see the youth just hungry to do anything, there's a, there's a fire inside the youth that will take them very far. So if Sammy can grow up to be as strong as the youth in this room, outside in the universities, that's my real goal. I have not started my TED talk yet, by the way. I'm still waiting for the presentation here, so <laughs> I'm going on a bit. Um, but actually, maybe what I will do is I will, I will talk about the subject that I will be talking about. Um, the subject, the title that I put, uh, there we go, is that we should all be roosters and butterflies. Right? I took that title, I stole a piece of that title um, from a, uh, one of my favorite African writers who wrote about we should all be feminists. And I think I find that feminism is such a heavy, loaded word. I know so many strong women who say yes, but I'm not a feminist. But we know feminist means that we believe that men and women should have equal opportunities. That's a given. I assume that we're all in the same room. That's not the topic I'll talk about. But what I want to talk about are real examples of that strength that I've seen here in Algeria. So I will be talking about a rooster from Riba and a butterfly from Calitus, okay? otherwise known as Eucalyptus, um, but Calitus, just outside of Algiers. So if we can keep going through the presentation. As, I was, as I'm talking, uh, I chose roosters and butterflies. Those are classic images of, of men and women, right? We think that roosters need to be strong and butterflies need to be soft. And I'm gonna talk about roosters and butterflies I've met here in Algeria that are very strong and very beautiful um, with a little bit of different stories as we go along. Like I said, we will be going through uh, eucalypt, uh, Calitus and Riba. Uh, <laughs> And essentially, let me talk about the rooster from Reba first. Okay? I heard a story about a rooster from Reba um, from a very talented young person who told me about that he lives in Reba and they raise chickens. And the usual progression in a chicken's life is that the chick grows up with their mother and at a certain age, the mother chases away the baby chicks. Can we keep going? <laughs> the mother chases away the baby chicks, right? There we go, we're going through eucalyptus, reba, we're gonna keep going all the way up to a rooster. Okay, so roosters normally, chickens normally chase off their young when they reach a certain age, okay? Keep going. <laughs> there was a certain uh, chicken with one chick in reba where she only had one chick. So once her chick grew up, she had some more chicks when it normally was the age to chase off her young male chick, she didn't. She had new chicks, and that young chick grew up and started to help take care of the babies. Sat on the nest with her, became a rooster, but still stayed with his mother. He 
sat on those eggs with those chicks. Once they hatched, they grew up into larger chickens and roosters. The mother eventually chased that group away when she had new, new babies, new chicks. But this rooster stayed with those younger chicks, and they grew larger and they grew stronger. That rooster ended up being the protector of the entire flock. This young man from Ruba, he pointed, Reba pointed out, that was the strongest time that they had with their entire flock of chickens because this rooster was such a good protector, raised those chickens to be very strong, and then those chickens and roosters from there continued to do the same thing. So this young rooster, taking on a different behavior, actually made the entire flock stronger. Now, another thing, we'll go back to, to Calitus, Many times we as women say, well, if it just weren't for the men, it's so hard to deal with men all the time. They're always keeping me down. Now I'm going to talk about butterflies from Kelly Trus. And I think what we know, again, I'll just tell the story. We don't need images. Something that we know about caterpillars turning into butterflies, right, is that they go through that cocoon phase, right? And it's a struggle. They actually go into a cocoon and they actually dissolve while they're inside the cocoon. Then you can start to see a butterfly inside, and then what happens? What starts? The cocoon starts to wiggle. There starts to be an enormous struggle for that cocoon to start to, for the caterpillar to start to burst out of the cocoon. Right? Now, something that's curious, <laughs> something that's curious, just leave it, I'm talking. Um, <laughs> something that's curious is that scientists at one time who were raising many caterpillars to become butterflies, tried to snip the cocoon. Let's say, we want all of our butterflies to come out. But what happened to those butterflies? They came out and they were shriveled. And they hopped around a bit, but they never could open their wings. And eventually they died. It's the very struggle of coming outside of that cocoon that strengthens the wings and that builds the strength and actually pumps the blood into the wings. And I think many times, as mothers, I think we try to make life easier for our children. There's a phrase I've heard here many times, less, less, less. No, it's part of that struggle against things that makes people stronger. Now, this cocoon, the caterpillar from Calitus. Okay? There's a young woman that I've met in my travels around Algeria who's very strong. Okay? Her cocoon is eucalyptus, Calitus, which is beautiful now. When I drive out sometimes to pick her up, it's beautiful. It wasn't a beautiful place in the 90s. Okay? Calitus was a hotbed of terrorism. And she was 12, 13. She grew up in that period. She doesn't sleep anymore because she said during the day when she walked to middle school, the terrorists would tell her, put on the hijab or this wasn't a question of whether she wanted to wear the hijab or not, but she told her mother, they didn't ask me nicely, therefore I won't. And her mother said, please, 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 no, they didn't ask me nicely, it's my choice, therefore I won't. She resisted the tip, but she doesn't sleep anymore because she said, I could face them down during the day, but I was afraid they would come at night, because they did. During the night, they would take in their neighbors, she would wake up and see things no child should see, but she still clung to her beliefs. Right? Now, it's a pleasure to be around her because she does amazing things. She travels with us around Algeria. She's a fantastic trainer. She's developing people across Algeria. But if she doesn't come home at a certain hour, she stays out. She would rather not bring dishonor to her family by coming home late. So we have an agreement she can stay out. She told me that she does have sisters her sisters stay home. They won't go out without a brother. They're very traditional. And they complain. They say in the family, why does she get the special treatment? And her father, the same father who imposes rules on all the children and they complain, says, if you want special treatment, then you battle these rules. I can't change my rules, but you can change your way. So within this same family, in the same cocoon, she struggles. She gets out. She's strong. At the same time, the rules are the same for everyone. If the other children in the household don't do that struggle, nobody's going to take it away. So it's a piece of saying that life is not going to get any easier. Every single bit of our strength 
is struggling. We can't expect that the circumstances around us are going to make life easy. The best thing that we can do is struggle against them. I may put this present online so you can see some images another time. But I, <laughs> as I've been here too, I do hear people say to me, yes, Leah, but women, we're the guardians of tradition. We can't fight. We need to keep things calm. It's OK. Don't, don't try now. <laughs> but let me tell you, I, as I've come to learn Algerian tradition, I don't accept. I accept that Algerian women are very strong. I live with one you just met. All of my examples of Algerian women are fighters. As I've studied Algerian history, I love to hear the Tuaregs tell me about Tinhinan. I love to hear about Kahina. Even across the region, I've learned about Lubna, who's from uh, Andalus. We heard beautiful Andalusian music. Lubna was an amazing, she was a slave who became a learned person. Okay? There's Zainab, who's a queen in southern Yemen, which if you look now, you would never believe there are shrines to this woman as a learned person who, has, who battled against in her time in the 600s. Okay? She battled. It's something that we hear. Some of the strongest women, uh, as I've researched, Khadija, peace be upon her, in the, in, the, in the Quran. Beautiful, strong women throughout culture, throughout history, who have struggled on their own. Okay? So there were two quotes, actually. One, is a quote from, uh, from my country, which is from Coretta Scott King, which is, the struggle never goes away, and don't make it. That's what makes us stronger. Okay. Another quote that I found from Benazir Bhutto, who was a very strong leader in this region, was that the sign of a good leader is someone who remains calm and strong in the face of any adversity, because that's what gives us strength. So I thank you for allowing me and my family today to share some of our experience. And I hope to hear many more stories from many other strong women in the room. Thank you.